Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. There was no video yesterday because there wasn't much news other than Mawson. So we'll talk about Mawson's news from yesterday a little bit today. Uh, obviously, we have the well, Fed raise the interest rates by 25 basis points today. So we'll, we won't talk in, talk about it. We'll look at the charts, what's going on with Bitcoin and what it might mean going forward. We may have a little bit more of a dip to come or we may have already had the dip. So we'll take a look at that. And then we're also going to take a look at the miners. Did some numbers again. I did this, I think, three months, three or four months ago before where we took the market cap and divided it by the uh, petahash to find out what are the miners getting for the petahash value and comparing each other to that. Okay, so we'll get into that afterwards. So it should be a pretty quick video here. And as always, you guys know the drill. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously as always. And let's take a look at the market here. So... We know that the markets were kind of indifferent today as far as with the Fed rates being increased 25 basis points. S&P was down 0.02% on the day. As the Dow Jones was up 0.23% on the day. And the Nasdaq was down actually 1.2% uh, on the day. So it was a mixed day for the markets. Bitcoin was actually up today, which is kind of nice. It was up yesterday as well. Uh, not a lot, but it was up. Um, so today we were up uh, approximately 0.44%. We closed at 29,353. We are now kind of trending on the 50-day moving average line, which is right here, the blue teal line, I guess you could say. Um, and we'll have to see how tomorrow goes and everything else. In the past, when we had the announcement, we did go up a couple of days, and, and then we finally went down. So will we see the same thing happening? Don't know. We'll have to see if that's the way it's going to play out. Um, you know, we may have a couple of days going up, and then we may have a little bit of a, of a correction of going down in value on Bitcoin, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, let's see, let's take a look at Ethereum here really quick as well. Ethereum is also hugging the 50-day moving average, the teal line here as well. And we'll see how that one's going to play out also. Now, the miners, for the most part, had a pretty good day today. Uh, they were, uh, yesterday, I think they were down for the most part, but today, they're doing a lot better. So, let's take a look at what's going on here. Any was up today 1.72%. Argo was up 2.05% on the day. Bit Digital was up 5.56%. Had a good day. It's now kind of hovering right around the 20-day moving average, the yellow line. And we got BitDeer was down 0.68%. It's still above the 50-day moving average line. BitFarms uh, bounced right off of that 20-day moving average line, which is nice to see. It, it was up today 5.92%. Cypher was down 2.58% today, so it's below the 20-day moving average line. CleanSpark was up 1.47% today. And basically, it's above the 20-day moving average line. Core Scientific uh, actually bounced up today 9.3%. Nice gains today. Uh, it is now above the 20-day moving average lines. It was below it. Digihost was up 1.01%, and well, that was kind of rocking back and forth today. It went all the way down to the 50-day moving average and then came back up. So definitely a volatile day for Digihost. DMG was up today 1.49%. It's still above the 20-day moving average. GreenEdge was up 0.15%. Hard to tell on that one. Hive was up 2.91%, so it's still bouncing off of the 20-day moving average. Hut 8 uh, actually came down to the 200 weekly moving average today. It was up 3.77%, and now it closed above the 20-day moving average, which is nice to see as well. Iris Energy was up 2.58%, still above the 20-day moving average. Marathon was up 3.96%, still above the 20-day moving average. Mawson was up 3.26% today. It looks like it's below the 20 and the 50-day moving averages as well. And then Riot was up 2.79%, still way above the 20-day moving average. Saluna was up today huge, 26.41%. <clears throat> Not sure why they're up so much. Um, they did come out with news on the 25th that they are now at two exahash and managed um, hosting. I guess that's hosting mostly from that. Uh, but that's kind of what they, they're they at there. Two exahash. I can't remember what they're at for their own self-mining right now. Uh, but I think it's less than that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So maybe that's picking up because of that. Uh, Stronghold was up also today nicely 15.13%. Uh, it has bounced off the 20-day moving average and is still holding in there. So that's pretty good. Terror Wolf was also up today nicely, 5.2% on the day, and it's, it didn't even come close here recently to the 20-day moving average like some of the other miners have, which is kind of interesting that that one's doing really well. Uh, but not a surprise, I still think it's uh, undervalued from where it should be. Okay, Now, let's take a look at uh, the network hash rate really quick, see what's going on there. And I read a story today, didn't remember to uh, link it in here, but I think somebody said, somebody, well, the article was that the network hash rate after the having event is going to drop like 30% or something like that because a lot of the miners are going to be unprofitable or not necessarily the ones that we cover here, 
but some of them uh, smaller time miners, some of the enthusiast miners as well. Those guys might be shutting down at that point. So that'll be interesting to see if that actually happens. But nonetheless, today we are on the seven day average. We are currently at approximately 375 million terahashes on the seven day average. Look at, look at the one day average. We came down a little bit here to 369 million terahashes. Um, you can still see that we're kind of going sideways here a little bit. Um, some little peaks and increases here a little bit, but mostly uh, going well, trading sideways, I guess you could say on the network hash rate on that one. It's been pretty even here recently. Instead of this huge uh, run up that we've had here from December, and yeah, I mean, December, end of November into December, and then up through basically this was uh, through April. For like four months, we were just going gangbusters as far as getting miners plugged in and everybody running at that time. Okay, so that's it for that one. Let's take a look at Mawson really quick. Mawson that is right there. When I first read this story, I thought they were uh, indicating interest in selling their facilities. I was like, holy cow. But then as I actually read into it, it kind of made a little bit more sense. So Mawson Infrastructure Group Inc. invites submission of indication of interest for its BTC hosting and HPC co-location services. So at first when I read that, I thought it was for their facilities and not services. And then when we get into the nitty gritties of it all, it says down here, Mawson has also received an acknowledged notice of intent not to renew a customer equipment co-location agreement or hosting agreement from a current customer. So the current customer is Celsius Mining. Therefore, the hosting agreement shall expire in accordance with its terms on August 23rd, 2023. This should result in significant opportunities for Mawson and potential hosting customers to engage in discussions on approximately 20,000 uh, rack spaces available with the capacity to expand further. That's a lot. 20,000 miners at 100 terahash. You're looking at 2 exahash of potential that could be there, if, maybe even more if you get the 140 XPs. Terahash miners. So this is not good news for Mawson. Um, you know, losing a customer there. I'm surprised that they're not possibly buying these miners from them. Uh, unless Celsius isn't willing to sell them or is just moving them someplace else. But I think with the miners being already in there, uh, depending on what miners they have, if they're at least the 100 terahash miners or a little bit better, that would be a great thing to do would be to buy the extra 2x of hash of miners for yourselves. Um, obviously, if that's if they have the cash to do it and everything else, but the miners are already there. They're plugged in. All you had to do is pretty much buy them and run them and you're running it for yourself. So that would be kind of my thing to do unless there's other things that are obviously impeding that like cash and everything else, okay? I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and we'll see how Mawson does going forward. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at the metrics here as far as the miners are concerned for Bitcoin miners petahash valuation. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. You guys usually, hopefully you guys are viewing this on a big screen like a laptop or a desktop. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to see. I can see if I can maybe zoom this in a little bit more for you guys, 250%. There we go. Okay, that still fits in here. If anything, we yeah, that fits. Okay, so the way this works is we're taking the current market cap of all the miners. We're also looking at their current hash rate, future hash rate, and we're dividing basically the market cap by the current hash rate and the future hash rate to get some numbers for that. Uh, basically, to see where the where each miner is being valued per petahash. Um, you can extrapolate the exahash from that just by taking the um, like for hot eight they have 2.2595 uh, petahash you could extrapolate that to be 2.5 or, or almost 2.6 exahash okay based on that um, so we do that and then we look at what the average is for everybody here and then we run some numbers based on that based on the averages and things like that so i'm going to try to explain things as best as i can you guys can take a look at the numbers here and i'm not going to go into too dig, uh, deep of the details on this just some basic background. Shares outstanding is obviously shares outstanding. These are all from their Q, uh, Q1 results. So those were the ending in March. Stock price is what they were closing at today. Market cap is based on that. Stock uh, shares outstanding times mark times the stock price equals market capitalization. The 10 and the 2015, that's my PE ratios that I use. Don't worry about that. I could probably even hide that. Uh, and then this is my current rating on all of these guys here. You can see where everybody stands. Uh, current hash rate as well. We've talked about this in the past. You can see all of these here right now. Future hash rate where they're supposed to get to. Some caveats here. HUT 8 with the merger of USBTC is supposed to get to about 7.5, 7.6, somewhere around there uh, when they do merge. So that is definitely an increase there. We don't have that in here yet because they haven't merged yet. But I think the stock 
Price is front running the merger here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, one other thing to note is where was it? Iris. Iris, I believe, is saying that they're going to get to about nine to nine point five X by the end of the year. I currently have them about five point seven, which is what they have uh, bought so far. If they buy anything going forward, when we do this update, we'll obviously have those numbers in there as well. But so there's some caveats here as far as those things are concerned. Um, let me see what else here. Okay. First column here is market cap divided by petahash. So this is what we're getting as far as value by the investors. This includes HODL as far as market cap is concerned. And then we do one with where we take out the HODL as well. Which is be the next column. But you can see here that the market cap per petahash for HUT 8 is $305,280 per petahash, which is they're the highest uh, value based on that right now. Uh, Riot uh, is at 301,000, BitDeer at 246,000, BitDigital at 184,000, Cypher 163,000, Marathon 159,000, TerraWolf 157,000, Hive at 134,000, CleanSpark at 82,000, BitFarms at 81,000, and Iris Energy at 66,000. <clears> Excuse me. Now, when we take out the HODL from this, so what we're doing here is we're looking at what they currently have in HODL position, multiplying by the by the current average Bitcoin price right now for the month of July. And then we're getting a BTC value for that, what that's actually valued. We'll take, we're taking that out of the market cap here and then just using that number to uh, divide that by the current hash rate. And this is what we're kind of getting right now. So HUT8 obviously is getting quite a bit of a premium here compared to some of the other miners. Um, they're now down to 197,000 value per petahash. Riot is uh, still pretty close, 281,000 to the 301 that they were at. BitDeer is right at the same because they don't have any HODL, at least not that I could find, so 246,000 for them. BitDigital came down a little bit to 176. Cypher, pretty close to uh, where they were, 161,000. Marathon, down a little bit, but not much, 137, so they're not getting much of a, uh, ink, a boost from their HODL position. TerraWolf, 157,000, same as it was. Hive, 116,000, uh, down a little bit. Clean Spark still at 80,000, uh, down very little there. Uh, what else? We have Bit Farms at 77, also down very little, along with Iris. Iris doesn't have any HODL, so that's kind of how it plays out. Okay. Next, if we take uh, the market cap minus HODL, is what we're getting the market cap here. So basically, that is telling me that 35% of HUT 8's market cap is based on their HODL position, based on this number of 35, roughly, right? Riot is only 6.8%. BitDeer's got none. BitDigital is valued at, their HODL is only included in there as 4.46%. So not much. Uh, Cypher, 1.34%. Marathon is at 13%. TerraWolf, 0. Hive at 13.2%. CleanSpark at 2.2%. BitFarms at 3.8%. And based on this, HUT8 is getting a lot more value for their BTC value than uh, I think some of the other miners are like. Riot is getting only 6.8%. They have 7.2 thousand Bitcoins compared to the 9.2 the HUT 8 has. And then Marathon has only 12,538. They're the biggest one with the HODL position, but they're only being valued based on that at 13.49% of their market cap, uh, which, is, which isn't very much. Um, so based on those numbers, it looks like HUT 8 is being way overpriced right now, but it could be because of the coming up merger with USBTC. Okay. Next, average market cap here. We're taking the average market cap, and the way we're doing this is taking the uh, average market cap minus huddle position here per petahash value, multiplying it by their future hash rate, where they're going to possibly be at, and where they should be in, uh, in valuation that way. And I probably should have been using... Uh, I'm trying to think here if it would have been better to use the current hash rate. We'll go with future hash rate. Uh, kind of doing this on the fly here a little bit. But that leads me to believe that with the future hash rate growth, and like I said, HUT8 could get to about 7.5 and maybe 7.6 exahash after the merger. We're using what we currently have it for them. Uh, so that would get us to about 788 million t um, market cap for them. Stock price would be at 356 for that at that point. It would be actually a decrease for them at 0.51% uh, from where they are right now in value for the stock price. So based on that, it is looking like it's pretty well valued right now based on that. Uh, if we look at Riot, Riot should be around $19 at that point when they get to the 20 exahash, roughly. That would be a 3.23% increase in them. Uh, they should probably go up a little bit more. 
but like I said, we're using the average price here or average, yeah, average valuation per hodl. I mean, if you use these numbers here that they're currently getting, they'd be much higher than that, but I'm using the averages to kind of look at them a little bit more fairly. Bit deer would be at $10.98, so that would be an increase of 7.62%. or 7 Bit digital would be at $4.12. You can see the market cap here. That's an increase of 3.19%. Cypher would be at $4.62. That would be a 22% increase from where they are right now. Marathon would be at $24.75. That would be a 47% increase from where they are right now. Terra Wolf would be at $5.80. That would be a 59% increase. Then you got Hive would be at $7.98. That would be a 50% increase. Clean Spark would be at $24.24, 289% .24, increase. Bit Farms at $4.86, 171% increase. And then Iris Energy at $16, that would be 137% increase. But like I said, if they get to the 9.5, that would definitely help them out there. This is if everything was equal for them, which we know it's not. Uh, some are getting more, some are getting less. But this is basically where they would be equal, and in my opinion, and how they should be if things were equal where they should be priced in at and compared to where they are right now, okay? Uh, if we're looking at the future hash rate growth for them. So as you can see here, one of the ones still, unfortunately, as it always appears to be, is uh, CleanSpark still the most undervalued right now based on this. And if we look at the actual numbers here or the graphs, nope, we can fit all this stuff in here and this is way out here. Let's see if we can squeeze these in a little bit. So if we do that, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Okay, that might work a little bit better. So like I said, this is the market cap per peta hash value. This is with everything, HODL, everything else included. We've talked about the numbers here. You can see how everything stacks up. The average line is right now at 171,000 per peta hash. Should be the value for everybody here. You can see that clearly Hive, CleanSpark, Bitfarms, Iris are way below that number. And you got a, quite a few that are way above that number. Hot8, Riot, BitDeer. Bit digital right now, and you got Cypher Marathon, Terrell getting pretty close to that number. But then when we do the take out the huddle of the value, you can see that uh, still hot eight, riot, bit deer, and bit digital, along with cipher, would be pretty close to that number right now, along with Terra Wolf. The ones that would be still undervalued would be Marathon, Hive, Clean Spark, Bit Farms, and Iris on those numbers. And then when we actually look at how much growth each of these miners still has, we can see that Riot still has a lot of growth about a 2x growth from where they are right now, along marathons getting pretty close to where they're supposed to be at. I mean, they're 17, they're supposed to get to 24. We're looking at another 7x a hash pot, uh, growth potential. And then we got uh, Cypher still has got quite a bit of growth left. BitDeer as well. Uh, Terrible, same thing. CleanSpark still basically a double here from where they're supposed to get to. And then we got BitFarms on the end here at almost uh, 2 point, what is it, 2.15 exahash left to install, and they're saying that they're going to grow possibly more than that. And then Iris Energy also, like they said, to a 99.5 exahash by everything said and done. Okay, so based on this, I can, at least I'm looking at it as Hot 8 is pretty well valued based on where they're supposed to be right now. A lot of these guys are still undervalued for where they're going to be in the future with their hash rate. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with this. This is kind of a nice little metric that I like to look at as well, along with some of the other metrics to see where the miners are in position to other miners and are ones being more favored than others. Uh, definitely looks like it. Uh, but that's it. Let me know what you guys think. As always, this is going to be available to my Patreon members. That will be uploaded later on tonight. I think I'm going to try and see if I can fit the screenshots in for the YouTube members as well. That I'm hoping to get uploaded either tonight or tomorrow sometime. And we'll see what happens later on this week as far as, uh, you know, Bitcoin, how well it's going to perform with the news of the 25 basis points. And then we are almost done with the month of July, which is surprising. Uh, time is flying too fast. But we'll have, obviously, the uh, Q2 results for a lot of the miners coming up in, like, the first or second week in August. We'll cover all that, see how they are performing, how they're doing from Q1, or, yeah, from Q1 of this year. And just then we'll do some metrics on them as well when they actually provide all the information. Okay, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.